everybody. I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. So right now what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk with you about um, another survival myth, I guess. It's kind of a, kind of a survival myth. Um, and that is that wild edibles are not a long-term viable option for sustaining calories in a extended wilderness survival situation. Okay? Um, don't get me wrong. It's important to know wild edibles, all right? It's important to know wild edibles because in a long-term extended grid down situation, maybe you've bugged out, maybe there's been a collapse, whatever the case may be, it's important to know wild edibles, but primarily the most important reason to know them is for get vitamins and nutrients and for herbal uh, medicinal remedies. That is their importance. If you think that you are going to be able to sustain yourself on wild edibles, I don't care if you're a vegan now or what, you're absolutely wrong, okay? You have to have additional methods to, um, to feed yourself. You know, the, there's just not the calorie level in those foods to be able to sustain you, okay? They're, they're just, isn't it's it's just a reality you're gonna have to find a way to get fish you're gonna have to find a way to get meat you're gonna have to grow uh, vegetables that don't naturally grow out in the woods to get you know uh, like corn and tomatoes and those kinds of things um, to get additional calories and, and stuff from them um, it's it's just not realistic to think that you can feed yourself on um, on wild edibles alone. Now, if you happen to be in the perfect type situation, the perfect scenario where there's tons of berries and there's tons of different, you know, highly edible roots, it maybe somebody could make it happen. If you've got a, you know, a great knowledge and you just happen to be in the perfect location. Um, but for the vast majority of people and the vast majority of wilderness areas across the United States, it's not realistic. Um, so, I'm throwing that out there because uh, I hear a lot of emphasis put on wild edibles as a method of food procurement and, and that they're going to eat them. But the real value in wild edibles is their herbal and medicinal value, especially in an extended survival situation. It's definitely going to help with roughage. It's definitely going to, you know, be a supplement for calories. But, you know, you, you really need to be consuming probably in the neighborhood of 3,000, 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day in a wilderness survival situation. Um, and if you're not consuming that much, then you're just, it's a long-term starvation. It's just a slow de you know, degradation of your body's ability to maintain peak performance. Um, if you guys watch the series alone, that uh, that's a great series that it definitely highlights how this is true. You know, these people are out there for you know a couple of months, uh, getting you know closer to, to three months or whatever, and they are. It's just a slow. They're just losing weight and losing weight and losing weight, and they're getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. You know what I mean? And it's because they're not able to take in. Um, you know, the amount of calories is necessary. And so, you know, kind of along this whole concept is something that I've mentioned before, you know, you, you've got to have a group, you've got to have uh, a plan for dealing with this because doing it individually in the wilderness, you know, by yourself, taking off with your inch bag and you're going to live in the woods, it's not real. It's just not a realistic option, you know, for you. So um, you, you're, you're going to have to look more of the on the on the long term survival scenario you're going to have to think more like a homesteader and a pioneer than you are just a lone survivalist in the woods you know and so i just wanted to throw this out there it's something that i've been thinking about for a while i, I see a lot of folks talking about wild edibles and everything and i think that they are important 
Don't get me wrong, I really do. Um, but I think people need to understand where they fit best into a survival scenario, and that is going to be in treating wounds and um, you know helping you know make tinctures and all this kind of stuff that you know can help you medicinally. That is their number one and best uh, value. Now you, you can also, like I said, you can get some some supplemental uh, vitamins and nutrients from them and stuff like that, and that's fine. But their medicinal values are going to far probably outweigh anything else, and they're definitely it's definitely going to outweigh its caloric value because um, you know they just don't have many calories. Now, what I'm going to do here is just just for kind of gee whiz stuff, I'm going to put up some uh, some kind of pictures. I'm going to roll through some pictures here, and uh, it's going to just give you an idea of how many calories different food items have to just kind of show you how much food you would ha be having to procure to maintain that 3,000 calories. And the reason it's 3,000 calories instead of 2,000 calories is because you're in a colder environment, or you're probably going to be in a colder environment during at least parts of the year. Um, you're doing a lot more work. You're having to do a lot more physical activity um, than you would be in a city life. You know, a city life, sitting in the urban you know area, driving back and forth to work and all that kind of stuff, 2,000 calories is what they say average person burns. You're definitely going to be burning a lot more than that in a wilderness survival situation. You're going to be cutting wood. You're going to be having to, you know, hunt and you're doing all this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's just burning a lot of calories. So, anyway, just something to think about. And like I said, it's uh, definitely not suggesting that you don't know them. If anything, I'm actually trying to let you know that you really should know them for herbal and medicinal purposes. Just don't be misguided about the fact of how much calories they're going to take. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you like videos like this, please click the subscribe button. If you um, are already subscribed, don't forget to click the bell button so you get an email each time we upload. As always, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to lift the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys. Thank you.